Today's Cowboys Mailbag is made possible by Manscaped. April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, and our friends at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS to learn more. A super thanks to dive into on today's show from Brickhouse Gaming, a.k.a. at Bricker2019. That's a fun name. I know this will never happen, but if ownership of every franchise needs to have a time clock of 10 years, if you win a Super Bowl, your 10 years resets. It will force ownership to make every season competitive among every team. It's a fun idea. Uh, someone in the comments had replied, maybe you do 20 years. That might be a little bit more feasible. Ownership would never go for it because that's, that's, it means that you know every 20 years, at least 10 franchises are selling. And that's, that's too much upheaval. And you also kind of get into the, to the, the, the run of, you kind of don't have enough people. <laughs> they can afford an NFL team from that perspective. Um, the NFL does a good job of parity, though. They love parity. They love having playoff parity. You might be able to convince them to do it for 10, 10 years, a playoff berth. That, that might be doable. Now, if you haven't already... Check out the Cowboys report on Instagram. We've got more short-form videos posted up there. We'll be breaking down some prospects on 30 visits as those begin to continue to come out. So go follow us at Cowboys Report IG. From Wes, go get that money, Tommy. The best one on the chat sports across all team sites. Thank you, Wes. Do you think Hoffman could play as good or better than Tyler Biotish? I think it is in the range of outcomes, and I thought even at times your running game was better with Brock Hoffman than it was Tyler Biotish. I also wouldn't consider it a thing that I want to bank on. You know, relative to contract, yeah, I think that's doable. But if Brock Hoffman were a free agent, no one was going to pay him $10 million per year like the commanders did for Tyler Biotish. Now, that was too much for me for, for Biotish, but I, I think we're pushing it a little bit. Um from that perspective. That's just a little bit too much. From Michael, is it too early to expect anything out of Earl Bostick or Austin Richards, even just as depth pieces slash serviceable backups? If year two is too early, when should we expect to see the flashes of the potential upside we saw in 2023 come to fruition? I would like to see McCarthy develop a player at some point. Let's stick on the offense line for this entire conversation. I think as a backup, Earl Bostick, last year's UDFA from Kansas, or Awesome Richards, I think they make the team and can be a backup player for you. Now, I, I kind of put the over-under at two years there. We'll see how that plays out. And although I have no love lost for many in this organization these days, do we not give Mike some credit, and that the staff in general, credit for Tyler Smith? I didn't like that pick. I had concerns about him. He's been awesome for you. Terrence Steele was an undrafted free agent. That's worked out pretty well for him. Now, he was bad last year. That was coming off the injury. In theory, he's better this season. TJ Bass flashed some stuff as a backup. Now, Brock Hoffman's been better in Dallas than he was elsewhere. Now, that's not good enough, don't get me wrong, across the board, but I think you can point to some players that they've been able to develop and grow a little bit. So how would you grade this Cowboys offensive line right now? A, B, C, D, or F? Go ahead and sound off in the comments section. From We Don't Wife These 304s, would you listen to a three-hour daily podcast with Carton, Bayless, McCoy, and Joe, Joy Taylor if it meant the Cowboys would win the Super Bowl? I'd do it. For, for the betterment of the Cowboys, I would do it. Because the Joneses wouldn't. They, they wouldn't do it. I would. You promised me a Super Bowl in the same year and not just like general vague at some point that I may or may not be alive for, I would do it. Because I also know what it was building towards, and it'd be kind of funny in the process. Um, most of those people on that list are terrible. For Massive Matt, haven't watched live in a minute, so I wanted to say my input real quick. Yeah, we're pathetic. I don't see anything changing anytime soon either. It might get worse before it gets better. And you know, the line that the, 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 what was it, the, the, the light is always darkest before the dawn. We ain't even before dawn right now. This, this, this ain't it. At least it has potential to not be. And that's, that's what scares me maybe more than, than anything here. 
Uh, if you did not know, April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. And in fact, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer among men aged 15 to 35, i.e. me and producer Chris. So Manscaped is here to help spread awareness and help with early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS. Learn how to check out the uh, Check Yourself video. It's, it's actually pretty funny, by the way, too. Uh, for early signs of cancer, you can also use promo code uh, COWBOYS for 20% off and free shipping on all their top-of-the-line men's grooming products. They are donating, donating $50,000 to the Testicular Cancer Society this month. So you can check out the, the Check Yourself video and, of course, get some awesome products led by the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Two interchangeable skin-safe blade heads, the standard one, and then a foil blade to go smooth as well. So that URL, manscaped.com slash TCS, will be in the comment section to check out the video. And promo code COWBOYS will get you 20% off and free shipping as well on all of their men's grooming products. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Appreciate Manscaped sponsoring us here at the Cowboys Report. TKG, what is it about the Chiefs possibly coming to Dallas? Uh, the Dallas mayor is trying to run an anti-Cowboys campaign, which, like, Jerry's going to put that man in a body bag and bury him somewhere. Uh, it's not going to happen. It, it, it's just, it's honestly, it's political grandstanding, frankly. That's, that's really all it is. From, uh, from Zaire, I'd go get Brian Thomas Jr. with the 24th pick or sign Tyler Boyd. I don't mind the Boyd signing. Part of my issue there is I think... You like to use Cooks in the slot some. Lamb plays a lot in the slot some. Boyd's a slot player and kind of only a slot player, I think, at, at, this, at this stage. Um, you know, Brian Thomas could be the best player on the board if he's there at 24. But can you afford the luxury of a receiver right now with all your needs? I'm not so sure. From Will Gambino, is there any hope Jordan Lewis retires and never suits up again? No. And he's still your third best corner by a pretty massive margin who you're paying nothing to. I, th I think that was actually a, a pretty fine move uh, from the Dallas perspective. Uh, from Daniel M., what do you think about Micah Abraham out of Marshall uh, as a late-round pick in the seventh? In general, I am never mad about a seventh-round draft pick. That, that tends to go, it's a seventh-rounder, you're fine with it there. Uh, we'll see if he ends up getting drafted. Um, I've seen a couple of them in the seventh round, a couple of various mock drafts, but not much as of late. Uh, we'll see if maybe he's a, I don't think he's going to be a 30 visit. So seventh round though, I, I, I'm sorry, Marshall Corner. I don't know if I mentioned that. Marshall Corner. Um, we'll see. Uh, I think he's okay player that I thought could have been better this past year than what he actually was. From Johnson, what exactly is Dak Prescott worth in a trade? Good question. I don't know. In a bubble, ignoring the no trade clause, and if you had done this at the start of the offseason, like you should have done if you were going to do it, I, I would anticipate a Russell Wilson to Sean Watson esque return. Dak's coming off far better years than either of those two guys were. Now he's due for a, a I mean, Deshaun was due for a new contract too. I think you could have, if they didn't have the, the no trade clause and you shopped him, I think you could have gotten a pretty big return back. Now, the issue is, it's now April. Your options are more limited from just a reality perspective. They'll explode again later in the next offseason, but for now, you're a little bit hamstrung there. And he has the no trade clause. And if you were Dak, like, wouldn't you say, well, don't trade a two first round picks for me? I'm just going to play for this team only. You, you, they can give you a third. Like, because they screwed up the contract the first time, and they're screwing it up again, all of the power is in the quarterback's hands. All of it. And because he knows he's about to get a new contract next offseason, the urgency to get paid now isn't there the same way it seemingly was for Russ, who just wanted out of Seattle. I, and I think if, if you get an honest answer from Dak, I think he'd say he, would, he wants to do it in Dallas. He wants to be here, you know, all things equal, but we're trending towards a path where maybe all things aren't equal in the end. So for next year, 2025, 
Will the Cowboys end up keeping Dak Prescott, or will this story that Stephen Jones once said, we think it'll be done without much fanfare quickly, which has not been the case, will they keep him? Y for yes, N for no. From Blaze and Daly, a second for Diggs? Wow, Dallas won't win anything until they have a real GM with real job security. The front office is a joke I could do better. Even if you didn't want to do Diggs for a second, which I think is a fine argument to have, I think what Blaze and Daly points out correctly is this. A little bit of desperation is actually a good thing for NFL franchises. Feeling the need, the urgency to win now or else exists for 31 other NFL franchises. It doesn't exist in Dallas at all. And that is a core issue where too much urgency is a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. But a little bit can help you. I think we're on seven, eight, nine, whatever it is, years in a row that the, that the Super Bowl winning team has spent more guaranteed money on a singular NFL free agent than the Cowboys spent on their entire free agency class. It's not a competitive way to, to, to do business, to win championships. It is a good way to be a 9-10 to 10 win team most years. Cowboys was great at that, but we all want more. From Wes, what is likely to be trade down from 24? Possible. And in fact, there are, there are scenarios which I would want them to trade down. Depends on how the board falls. Is there a run on tackles? Is there not a run on tackles? In which there's a lot of guys left. You know, do the Bills get desperate for a wide receiver? Do they jump up and you trade down and get some assets and get that fourth round pick back or even more? That makes sense to me. So I think it's very possible. We're going to have to wait and see, though. From Tony, how about trading for Alvin Kamara? It's a big no for me. Um, name brand. The decline has set in for Alvin Kamara. Um, you know, Alvin Kamara at his best was this dynamic, explosive runner who could do some pass-catching stuff for you, was averaging five yards a carry. He's been under four the past three seasons. O-line gets blamed too, and the offense times the Saints was just a check down to Kamara for a couple yards. I, I, at this stage in his career, I, I think the decline has set in too much. So name a player who you would like to see the Dallas Cowboys trade for. Sound off in the comment section right now. Fernando Garcia, uh, if the Cowboys don't make the playoffs, would that be a signal for the Jones boys to change their stupid mentality? It should be, but uh, honestly, if, if, if they are in the mix for Week 18, they'll think that they're close. You know, So it, it should be. I, I, I don't have faith in them, though, right now. Hunter M., assuming no more signings, how much cap space in 2025? It does depend on what you do with, like, a C.D. Lamb. Um, you know, you, you could pay him now, free up cap space this year. You'd probably roll that over and help basically cover off the contract in 2025. The, you can see numbers as high as $100 million dollars. I think that that number will drop it, it, once you get the, the rookie class signed and you factor in some more uh, demo hits that can already be included in there. I think a more feasible number is you're still probably in the, the $75 million range. You have two notable guys, three notable guys under contract long term. It's Micah, Terrence Steele, who might be cut, and Trayvon Diggs. So, like, yes, you have to pay these guys big money. In theory, Dak, we'll see about that. Lamb and Micah, but you're not paying anybody. Like, you've, you've, you, all of your big contracts are off the books right now. Yeah, there's dead money. It doesn't matter because the cap has gone up by so much you're covered off from that perspective. So, like, I, I, I think it's really, it, it's a bullshit excuse. When the Cowboys tell you that they're in salary cap trouble in 2025, no, they are not. They are absolutely not. And it is, it, 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 it's honestly a very not easy thing to understand. Like it's very complicated and there are weird rules and quirks. They are, they are not in trouble. They are not. Now, if you guys want daily Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos, hit that sub button. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. From Wes, it's either going to be Brooks or Benson. Uh, if, if I told you right now, you could get you know even money or better on 
Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson in the second round, that's the Texas running back and the FSU running back, everyone would take that. Uh, Brooks is such a Cowboys round two pick. It honestly borders on stereotypes. Like it's, it's, it, or even parody. Like it's, it's just a classic Cowboys move. They did bring in Benson too. Um, I have Benson over Brooks in part because of the, the injury stuff. One more from Wes here. What do you think would happen if Jerry told Steven to shut it and ran the team like the 90s? <sighs> They'd be more aggressive, and we'd, we would at least have more hope about it. It might not work. It's tough to win a championship. But you're trying, and we give them credit for it. Jerry won't, and honestly, my theory is that he saw what happened to his buddy Al Davis, and he doesn't want that to become his final years with the Dallas Cowboys. He doesn't want to have that same ending. 